So hello everyone, my name is Carrie Ramsey. For those that have not met me before, I'm the project manager for WeCan, which is led by Queen's University and it's funded by uh, FedDev Ontario through the Women Entrepreneurship Strategy. So welcome back to those of you who have joined us from previous workshops and it is great to meet the acquaintance of a few uh, new women entrepreneurs as well. Um, why don't you drop a note, just as we're letting people in from the waiting room still, why don't you drop a note in the chat to let us know where you are connecting from today, uh, both uh, geographically as well, if you'd like to share the name of your business. I'm sure we're all accustomed to Zoom at this point, but if not, if this is one of your first sessions, your chat button is located in the bottom panel in the very middle, it says chat. If you click on that, you should be able to share where you're connecting with us from today. It's just uh, great for us to know and uh, to welcome you. While you're doing that, I will say that I am joining you and connecting from the Belleville area. And I'll just take a moment to acknowledge that uh, Belleville is also known as the dish with one spoon for those of you who do know the indigenous uh, beginnings. And this is actually a traditional First Nations hunting, gathering and fishing uh, region. And we're talking today about pivoting, preparing, and prospering. And if I think back of the centuries of, of commerce and, and trade and just cultural and social gatherings that have happened in my own area here, it's, it's really exciting to be able to build on that rich tradition. So I'd like to acknowledge, first of all, that this is definitely the traditional territory of the Huron, the Anishinaabe, and the Haudenosaunee peoples, and it is uh, my honor and privilege to live, work, and play here with my family. So I am going to admit the couple that are waiting right there, and I'm going to unmute our hosts. If you just give me one moment, Jackie's probably wondering why she can't do that herself. Here we go. I'm just going to do that for our hosts right now, our presenters. If at any time you'd like to communicate, uh, just drop a, a note into the chat and uh, we would love to hear your thoughts. We will be unmuting at a certain point, but as I've said in the past, uh, it tends to be helpful to mute our uh, attendee microphones just because of the numbers of dogs and garbage trucks and um, <laughs> children that may be in our home offices right now. So I believe that will give us the optimum results. So without further ado, I would love to turn this workshop over to Jackie Costron and Rhonda Newlander, who are our presenters. They'll tell you a little bit about themselves. And uh, ladies, take it away. It's our pleasure to sit in on your session today. Welcome, everyone. We're excited to be here. Rhonda, would you like to start by telling us about yourself? Sure. Um, so my name is Rhonda Newlander. I'm a CPA, um, formerly CGA. Um, I've been in public practice since 1992, so a year or two. Um, I am currently in public practice now in Kingston, and uh, you know we focus mostly on small businesses, uh, personal returns, um, and getting people into a cloud-based environment. So right now, I mean, this is definitely a critical time for helping and assisting and navigating uh, individuals and businesses through this, this time. And so hopefully we can help you today too with that. Thanks, Rhonda. Well, welcome everyone. My name is Jackie Costron and I'm a business coach in the Kingston area. And uh, <clears throat> what, what I do um, is help small business owners, uh, mainly female entrepreneurs, uh, build a business that they're passionate about and help them align their income with that passion so that they're getting rewarded appropriately for all the hard work and passion that they have towards their business. And what I've been focusing on a little bit more now, just because of circumstances, is the COVID benefit program. And Rhonda and I have worked together a lot since this has uh, uh, first come into our lives. And we've um, just, I guess I would say collaborated and um, to make sure that we were both clear on the benefits and then helped each other help clients. So uh, we were, are happy to be able to today uh, talk to you about the benefits and help you navigate from today into tomorrow. And you know, we've all heard phrases about the next stage, the new normal and all of those other phrases. But what we do know is that we're going to go from today, what we knew, well, we left behind something that we knew, then, then we're sitting where we are, not really knowing what's next. And I do believe that we're going to go through a period of time where we don't know what's next. So 
Um, we like to separate that reality into three things, pivoting today, uh, preparing for the best, best what possible to prepare for what's next so that you can continue and start to prosper as we move forward. So that will be the focus. We have, we, we believe all the current information on COVID later in the deck and why, why I preface it with we believe is because things change quickly and we monitor it daily. Um, but we have the best, the information to the best of our knowledge. I know that there were some senior announcements today that I haven't had a chance to navigate deep into, but I don't believe that they'll be uh, part of today's conversation anyway. So, um, yeah, so without further ado, I'm just, I, I will get started. And the first thing that I want to say is that um, this conversation today doesn't replace professional legal advice. Um, we'll give you all sorts of ideas, we'll talk about strategies, but in order for you to get thorough and complete and proper advice, please rely on, on your uh, business partners today, your accountant, your financial advisor, lawyer maybe, just make sure that you don't apply anything without getting specific advice. And the first thing I'd like to start with is permission. And I think this is a really important piece because as female entrepreneurs, I feel that we're really hard on ourselves and that we don't necessarily adjust our expectations on what is, you know, achievable on any given day. And certainly when we apply COVID on top of that and the distancing and the stress of that, and maybe many of you have taken up school, being a school teacher uh, out of necessity because your children are at home with you. And there's so many things that are realities that the first thing you, that you have to understand is that you have to give your permission, yourself permission to not perform at the same levels. We've not done this before. Lots of change has changes happened. Lots more will happen. And you're just not going to function at your normal levels. And I just think that's really important to understand because to move forward, you have to be kind to yourself. So that's what we're going to talk today is about how to move forward in your business and your life. And so just, I just want to encourage you, just be kind. So Rhonda, you're going to take it away before we delve into pivoting. You want them to take a close look at their numbers. So, so really, we, what we really need to do at this point is, is stop and look to see where we are at. So, you know, so this is a this is a stop and look where you are at right now with your business. So are you shut down? Do you have receivables coming in? Do you have people that owe you money? Do you have people that you owe money to? Do you have future commitments as far as revenue that has been projected out that may or may not come to fruition? Uh, maybe you're planning a big event and and you know there's no certainty as to whether you're going to even be able to execute that event. Or is it smart to, at this point, to just to turn around, just shut it down right now? So it's really important right now to just take a look at, to see where are you at, um, know your numbers, what needs, what, what amount is going to come in, what amount is, is going to go out, and what are you going to do with, with uh, the information and, and with your business going forward. Um, there's definitely programs that are out there that you need to look at. Uh, there's the the various COVID programs, the the, the loans. I'm, I'm going to speak mostly right now to small business because I think that most of our our participants are small business uh, it, people. So um, you know, what sort of programs are you going to be able to apply for? Should you apply? Um, and uh, you know, should you be bringing your staff back right now? So those are all of the things that you really need to stop and, and address right now. And I'm sure many of you already have. And if not, you're you're looking at that because we're starting to get where we're going to start to open up again or be able our, to operate our businesses again. So you know, we really need to to look and see what that is going to look like. So. Then going forward with that, Jackie, it might be requiring uh, you to pivot then to your, your business as to what you, you have been doing in the past. So Jackie, I'll let you speak to that. Uh-oh, Jackie, you're muted.
You're unmuted from my end, so you should be able to just unmute yourself on your screen. There you oh, go. There, there, now I can. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Sorry about that. I'm muting because I'm one of those people that has the dogs that could be barking. So um, I thought I'd mute my one by uh, when Rhonda spoke. But, you know, the time of, of pivoting for some people is well underway and for other people it's just starting. And, and so what you have to do is, I believe, is look at things in a couple ways. And, and one of them is, how can I stay connected to my customers? I have customers that I serve today. I have to serve them differently. And how can I do that that maintains those relationships? And so you, you build structures around staying connected to them. And it could be just virtual connection or it could be communication in writing or, or combinations thereof. And you could find a modified way to provide services to them. I know, for example, fitness studios that have quickly gone online, they either stream classes or they recorded them for uh, their current clients to access um, online. And now they've been doing that for a while, they've been serving their clientele and now they're in a position to look at how that platform's working for them and then maybe it's something that they're gonna bring forward. So the first thing that you have to do is look, what, what do I have and what, I, what can I do? I have bought clothes, uh, online through a local store by going on a Facebook Live or a, a Zoom call or a, a video call with them. They've shown me stock, they've packaged it for me. I've had curbside pickup, I've tried it on. We've exchanged it back safely. There's many ways to um, move forward in, the, in, in a pivot way. So obviously, while you're doing this, you have to respect the governing bodies on what is safe and one of the things that I think is really important to remember is that when we communicate how we're continuing to serve, that we do it in a tone sensitive way. I don't believe the same flavor or flair of marketing is necessarily appropriate in this environment. Because I'm not aware of the marketing style and campaigns that you normally uh, utilize, I just want you to take a close, close look at your marketing and say, is it sensitive to the times? Am I speaking to my clients or my potential clients in a way that is offering them what I want, how I want to serve them, but still in keeping with uh, being sensitive? I can give you examples. I have a client who is a jewelry maker and she wanted to go offline and not try to market uh, during this time. And then people were reaching out to her because part of what they needed to be happy and healthy at home is maybe enjoy a piece of jewelry and they had the capacity to buy. And so it, you know, they, they were wanting her to provide the opportunity to purchase. So we have to just be aware that people are sensitive to how we market, but still continue to pro provide. Many of us have great services for the rest of, of normal days, putting ourselves inside this COVID circumstance does not make our services less value. It's how we communicate, how we serve. So, um, and, and just a little bit, just to add there as well. Thank you. I'm reading not, my notes, so thanks for that. Sorry, and to not feel guilty about, about doing business right now. You know, you don't, just because we're in isolation doesn't mean your business has to necessarily stop or you have to feel bad for doing better than what you have did pre-COVID. So, you know, know that there is going to be some businesses that are going to flourish and others that are going to die out. So that's, it's really important to, you know, you almost have to have a little bit of foresight into what is going to happen going forward. You know, the brick and mortar, just like, you know, Jackie's talking, the brick and mortar stores, we're all getting used to a little bit doing something different or doing things in a different way. And so maybe business has to be thought of in a different way than having physical meetings with each other and, and putting ourselves at risk. Because, you know, even if we open up next week or the week after, it doesn't mean that this is gone. I mean, everyone is clearly saying that this is, this could be something that is, that is a long term or, or at least for the next 12 to 18 months. So how is your business going to be able to still operate during that period? And, and so there's a couple things that I encourage you to do is that is, is don't look, first off, don't look for perfection. If you've got something that you feel will serve 
that you need to continue to offer and serve people well, then launch it and learn on the way. Be tone sensitive and, and you're not going to get it perfect and that's okay. Launch and learn. I'll say that to you a whole bunch of times. Just launch and learn. And if you're authentic and vulnerable when you're launching and learning, people are going to be open to the, the mistakes that can happen when you're new. You just be honest about it. So the other thing that's going to happen is that as you move forward, you're going to get ideas about what I could might maybe do in the next stage and what I could maybe do when the virus is, has got a um, vaccine. So start keeping lists, like just get a, a book, write down you know, medium term ideas, long term ideas, write it down so that you don't forget and then just put it aside and focus on what you can do today to, to pivot and continue to serve. I think that is all. I'm ready to move on to you, back to you, Rhonda. All right. So then at that point, then uh, we have to stop and look again at our numbers and, and see like, okay, so with the, the new, our new thoughts or our new processes or thinking that whatever changes that we're going to make will have to be something that is going to be potentially long-term in the future. Because I think that we have to look at this long term in order to really sustain our businesses going forward. So, you know, again, re-looking at this, if you haven't done a budget in the past, this is a perfect time to, to start doing some planning with this and, and to look at, you know, what, what am I going to be generating in the future? And, and these things are, you know, we're, we're not uh, fortune tellers. We can't, you know, look into our crystal ball, but, but planning and, and, you know, really looking at things and being ready to, to pivot our businesses or, or look what's going to work and what isn't going to work. And, and looking around, there's amazing ideas that are coming out that I would never have thought of before, that people are, are thinking of ways of doing business that, you know, are just completely innovative and, and holy smokes, what a great idea. And, and those can be your ideas. And even if it isn't your idea and it's someone else's idea, but you think it's going to work for your business, you know, execute and, and, and look at that. And then again, looking at the programs that the government has out there, uh, the wage subsidy program so that you can keep your staff on so that you can get your business ready for all of the safety protection measures that are needed to, to go forward and keeping your staff on um, through the wage subsidies, through the, the loan, the, the SIBA loan, uh, of which, you know, that's a $40,000 loan of which the government is only looking for a $30,000 repayment with interest free. Uh, you know, if you haven't already applied for that, you know, you definitely want to look at that. And in order to qualify for that, you would just have to have a payroll account um, of which you've paid your employees at least $20,000 in 2019. So, you know, looking at these programs, maybe you don't need that cash right now, but maybe you will in six months. And will this program still be available? I don't know. So, you know, really looking at these programs and saying, you know, maybe I should apply for these things now while I still am able to uh, and, and have the, the resources the, ready to be able to do whatever I have to do to pivot my business going forward. Okay. Um, Rhonda, I'm going to ask a couple of questions um, in regards to this. The staffing strategies, um, if I have multiple staff, bring some back, bring all back. I think you have to really look at, again at, you know, what, what, so the government has put this wage subsidy where they're really trying to have the businesses kind of be the in-between so that they will subsidize the, the, the companies to keep the businesses, uh, the, the staff on for the businesses. So the government is really trying to partner with businesses as much as they can to keep the staff still on and going. So there's kind of a multiple range of staff. You've got the staff that you're still paying, but they're not doing anything. Um, and then you have the staff that maybe are doing something lightly, or maybe they're still working full out like my staff have been. Um, so, you, you know, the you really have to see what is what's the best for you but if you do bring the staff back and you have a, a reduction in your revenue then you do qualify or you may qualify for the the wage subsidy uh, and that is 75 percent of the wages that you are paying to the staff that you would be able to get back cash back into uh, the business 
to help with the staff. Um, Rhonda, there's a question in the chat and I'm not sure if you want to address it later. Maybe let us know if you want to hold our questions till the end. I know you're going to go into detail into various um, parts of the government funding. Uh, did you want to respond to one now that had regard regards to payroll? Sure. Okay, so it's uh, what about new businesses that have a payroll account but don't meet the 20,000 in payroll from in, in 2019? But didn't pay payroll in 2019? They didn't meet the $20,000. So unfortunately, if you hadn't paid $20,000 in payroll in 2019, you wouldn't be able to qualify for that, that, that loan. Um, they did change that. Uh, it started off as $50,000 in salary and that it was reduced to 20. So even if you don't qualify right now, that doesn't mean that they won't be changing. They're changing things daily. Not everything, but there are there may be changes that are coming out on a daily basis. But this subsidy, that loan is based on having paid twenty at least twenty thousand dollars of payroll in two thousand and nineteen. So, so there are some people that are just completely being missed by the whole subsidies and that and I think the government is aware of that and all we can do is hope that over time that they will address that. So any any business that has has been paying their owners through dividends they and they don't have any staff it's just the owners they have not been able to qualify for any of these subsidies and and they're they're, they're really kind of being forced to go on to the the serve which is the $2000 per month. So you know, it, it, right now, all of the subsidies have been based on companies that have payroll. So I can add one comment. Having listened, uh, in, in the past weeks, I listened to a, a live broadcast of Mark Gerritsen just answering questions in, off his Facebook feed. He does that. I, I don't know the frequency. Anyway, I was listening to one and he did state and he, that, so this is the Kingston area, that if he had uh, a constituent in his area that was close to those thresholds, he, he'd want to know about it. And, and so what he's saying is reach out to his office if you feel that your situation warrants an exception or is so close to those lines, you know. Um, so I, obviously, Susan, I don't know your specific circumstance, but it is an option to reach out to the MP's office. You can't, you, you know, you don't, nothing's promised, obviously, but it, it, it's no harm in, in trying, I guess. Uh, Ron is absolutely clear on the rules. Um, it's just some MPs have decided to have voice that they would go to bats if they could, if it was one of those circumstances. So, okay, you're welcome, Susan. So, um, any other comments about staff, staffing strategies, Rhonda, before we? Um, I think we'll we can talk more about the the like detailed strategies okay. for questions and that going forward. So okay, um, as you, as I mentioned before, we're going to get to some slides that go through the COVID program uh, in detail. So um, we'll just step forward into the next slide. So what you have to do at this stage, if you're providing some online services or or some safe distancing services and you're starting to get an idea from, from paying attention to what uh, is being set out loud by the politicians and governing bodies, we know that we're gonna be starting to, to reopen. And there's gonna be discussions about uh, what, it, what it looks like to be safe in reopening. And we can certainly look at some of our essential services and get an idea of what safe might look like. You go to the grocery store, how does that look different? While well, we wait in line outside, we're six feet apart, uh, we, um, uh, when we, when we see, um, when we're up at the cashier, they're behind plexiglass. Um, we, if you go to Costco, they're spraying down your cart. So we've seen all sorts of, of things that people who are businesses that are essential are using. So how does that apply to the business you have? Um, uh, and working with a hair salon, they know that uh, they'll have to be open at reduced capacity because they have to mean six feet between chairs. Um, they can't put services on top of each other. And you will know what I mean by somebody's in getting for a haircut, but you also know she's working with another client who's getting a color. Those services are on top of each other. That won't be allowed. 
everybody's going to have to be gloved and masked and the cape that you wear has to be single use like has to not be used next without being sterilized so that's a whole bunch of planning for just a hair salon and and so that's going to change how many staff do you bring back how do you get those PPE in place what kind of uh, shifts do you have to do in the physical setup of your salon all of those things have to be considered now because they will take some preparation you may need to purchase some things you'll certainly have to get a hold of ppe um, then you might have to do some restocking because maybe you closed your business with a certain amount of clothing or su or supplies for haircutting or whatever your business is and your stock may not be at its normal level so you'll have to consider that and the other thing is to consider is that if you're bringing some people back and not others and you're leaving others to be on CERB and you're paying others to come back in this new modified workplace, uh, I would suggest that you, you know, consider a conversation with your lawyer about what is my legal responsibility about employees' rights and safety and, and their health, uh, because you, you do have two groups of employees that you could potentially be treated differently. And, um, Again, now I'm going to be back to, to Rhonda because now as you open up, you're going to be spending money and, and your revenue is going to be adjusted based on, like if we use the hair salon, 50% capacity <coughs> and an increased cost. Um, so you have to be really aware of your numbers. In fact, you have to look at those numbers before time um, because should I be charging more for that haircut? because I've got this cost of PPE. Who bears the cost of the PPE? Do we share it? Is it the consumers? All of those things have to be considered. And um, uh, that brings us back to Rhonda, because looking at the numbers, yeah, just so one second before I jump, I want to make sure I got my notes, and I did. So <laughs> moving back to you, Rhonda. Okay, so yeah, so then, so we come again to, to look at where we're at now. So now we've got a, a, a good plan going forward. Uh, we've checked on all of our requirements for health and safety. We know now that now it's going to cost us more to operate or it's going to cost us less to operate or maybe we've moved into an online. For me, I'm looking at, uh, you know, do I need all of the space that I currently have if I have people working in shifts. Um, so I, it's gonna change a lot of things, right from you know, physically where we're, we're conducting our business uh, to um, how we're conducting our business. You know, I've, I've moved into an online um, payment and, and uh, um, engagement environment a, a couple of months ago, but you know, I've got an accounting firm down the hall that they're going to be couriering out all of their tax returns. And I think, oh my gosh, you need to pivot. You need to pivot. People are ready for this. They will do this. So, you know, you need to look to see what is out there, what is going to allow you to make, to, to move forward with your business. How much is that going to cost you? You know, just again, looking at Jackie's um, example of the hair salon. So that means that you're either going to have to maybe look at longer hours to accommodate the same number of people or, you know, shifts or, or doing things a little bit differently. So we're all going to have to operate a little bit differently or it's not going to be the same going forward. And we need to acknowledge that and, and be ready for that. So looking at our, our receivables, our payables again, our future commitments. So what kind of revenue can we now uh, look at in the future? Can we, can we plan on these things and, and can we budget these things um, in anticipation of being back in this sort of situation again or not? You know, maybe we, we're, going, we're not going to see a lockdown again at any point or, you know, or maybe we will. So I think we need to be able to be ready to, we've taken this time, we need to reevaluate our businesses and then be ready if this happens again. Because we don't want to be, if this happens again, we want to be able to be fully functioning our businesses as much as we can. Obviously, there's the, the one-on-ones that we, we can't change on every business. But again, I, I think it's really important to go back and look at these government-based programs and make sure that we're getting the money that we need now. Even if we feel that we don't need it now, 
what if we're back in a lockdown again in six months and that's going to last a long period of time? We may need that money then. So, you know, I'm, I'm really suggesting to people that, you know, get a, apply for as many of the government programs as you possibly can. The subsidy is out there for us. Um, we may not need it right this minute, but we may need it for either restocking or preparing our businesses for, for future going forward in, in the future. So again, then now I think we'll take a, a look at any of these programs. And you know, if you have any questions on any of these programs, because there, there is a lot um, and they're not that easy to navigate through. Some of them are really easy. Others are have uh, little tweaks here and there that we, are, we need to look at. So Jackie, do you have anything more to add before we kind of dig in? Uh, I do. I just want to talk about that final stage and, and moving forward and, and prospering. And, and um, I think sometimes the best way to, to demonstrate something is through a story. So I'm going to talk about a client situation here who on March 16th, when school break, supposedly school break started, and that to me is sort of the beginning of the first day that life was different because people thought they were gonna go on a holiday or thought that the March break was on. And instead, now we're in this physical distancing. And so I, I had a client that on that day, uh, their business was 100% shut down because of the clientele they served. They couldn't, they, it was a physical face-to-face -face business. They couldn't access their clients anymore uh, because of government restrictions. And so they went from um, employing four people to having zero income. Um, and in this model, they were subcontractors. So what happened is, is they started to pivot. Uh, the whole team took uh, their, their role in that and they started to pivot um, to what they could do online. And then they did some shifting. And, and the bottom line is that the business owner, um, because sometimes in times like this, you don't focus on your gross income because you know, it's also about the cash flow you can take out of your business. Because, you know, as a business owner, you, you have grocery needs too. And they didn't have payroll because of subcontractors. And, and so in, in, in what's been allowed to happen is that the business owner can still take the same owner's draw, even though, because, uh, even though they've had this big change in the gross revenue of the business because they've shifted how the business is being delivered. Therefore, the expenses in delivering that model has allowed the owner to maintain their monthly cash flow. So their needs have, you know, from an impact at, on a personal level, it hasn't been as severe because there's many ways of navigating this time and not all of them are about uh, maintaining that same level of gross income or bringing it higher. Sometimes it's about shifting things so expenses are different. And so there's an example of somebody who it isn't their old business, but they figured something out. They're able to meet their needs from a, a base need perspective. And now they have this new model of doing business that when they can move forward with their old one, when, if, who knows, and certainly we have no idea when, they'll be able to integrate these two models. They have the other one that was working well, and now they have this new one, and they'll be able to integrate. And I anticipate, like post-vaccine, that they'll need more staff because when they bring these two models that they have now functioned in, they'll be able to grow. So sometimes you're strategizing for a little bit farther away and the prosper is about when that vaccine hits the, hits the street and becomes available, which I mean, they say a year to 18 months and of course no one knows, um, but that is um, what, you know, experts are saying. So, you know, again, I really encourage you to write down your ideas uh, for two, a couple of reasons. One of them is when we write down an idea and we know we've got a document, we can release it and just put it to the side and focus on today and not worry about what's next. Just live in the now right now. And now we're in this physical distancing. Don't lose sight of your great ideas. And some of them will be, I can do this next when I'm allowed to open a little. And some of, the, are, of them are, I can do this great thing when the vaccine has provided that structure. So just, I think creativity uh, is, is uh, a real important piece and looking at revenue streams just a little differently and what your objective is. Okay, so now we're gonna jump right into COVID slides. Um, and Rhonda, so where would you like to go in the deck? 
Do you want to start with um, being a business owner? I think so. Um, and so, yeah, let's start with the business owners and, and the programs that are available out there. Okay. So we've got this SUS that they call it, the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy, which really is essentially 75% of, of your payroll, uh, the amount that you've paid to your employees up to $847 per week. Uh, that does also include the business owner, provided that that business owner was on payroll from January 1st to March 15th. So you really have to, you have to go back and analyze who did you have on payroll from January 1st to March 15th, and that's what's called your base remuneration. And so you've got to calculate your base remuneration for each of your employees. So that's the amount that they worked for that uh, beginning period. And then you look to see what that they, uh, you have, that they worked for the periods, period one, period two, and period three, which we've just, um, uh, we haven't hit yet. Um, so period one is open now. So you look at what did you pay to, oops, let's just go back, Jackie. Oh, sorry. It's okay. So period one, so if that's covering the employees, the, the salary that was paid or the wages that was paid from March 15th to April 11th. Uh, and that is open now. You can go ahead and file those now. So you have to work through the calculations. There's quite a bit to work through the calculation. Your number one calculation is do you qualify? In order to qualify, your revenue has had to have decreased by 15%. Um, looking at March of 2020 over March of 2019. And, uh, and then you go on to look to see if you qualify for the second period that's based on April, and the third period which is based on May. There's also additional calculations or additional ways of looking at calculating your subsidies. So maybe your March 2020 you were having a great month and then all of a sudden everything fell out, but you still had a great month for that month of March and it was over and above what it was for March 2019. That's okay if you don't qualify for that period. The government has put out some other ways that you can calculate to see if you qualify. So your first number one, uh, you look at to see did you qualify based from March 2020 to March 2019. Has your revenue gone down by 15% for that period? No, it hasn't. Okay, did March of 2020, has that gone down based on looking at your January and February of 2020 revenue? Has it decreased by at least 15% for that period? If that does, then it, you then qualify. If that doesn't look, work, then you could potentially look at your cash flow for that period. So there's three ways, and, and there are elections to use those various methods. Once you pick a method, you've got to continue with that method through all of the three claim periods. Also, in addition, if you qualify for the one period, so let's say that your revenue did decrease for March, but now you're, you've had a really great uh, you've pivoted and your revenue has increased and you're doing great for April and May. Well, if you qualify for one period, you automatically qualify for the second period. So if you've qualified for March and your revenue has gone up for April, you still qualify for the second period. So there's lots of things. So you really need to work with your, your accountant or your advisors on this because this, this is a really, it's a pretty intense calculation here just to make sure that you do qualify. So there's that, and, and in order to qualify your rev for the wage subsidy, your revenue has to have decreased. Okay, so revenue decreased for March, maybe you don't qualify for the first period, revenue decreased for April, now you can qualify if, you, if it did for period two. If you qualified for period two, you will automatically qualify for period three, okay? So that's the wage subsidy. So first of all, let's just, is there any questions on that wage subsidy before we we, we do have a couple, Rhonda. I have one that yeah. just talked about what you were talking about. There's two things that came out of that is, is um, when you talk about getting paid, if the owner's on payroll, they get, yeah. then they can get paid. Um, is that include any arm's length, non-arm's length relationships? Like if family was on payroll, would they still qualify? 
Again, you would have to work through it. They still have to have been paid for that base remuneration okay. But it's period. no different because they're not arm's length. Thank you. Yeah, you have and to go through and you have to identify. So the government, they have put on spreadsheets um, and they do have the step-by-step -step on their site. If you want to work through that, their spreadsheets are, they're pretty, they're okay. Um, it's there's just been lots of challenges on looking at, okay, I get paid monthly. You know, you have to go back and really look at the period for which the remuneration was paid for. So it's not necessarily when it was paid. It's like, what period was it covering? So was it March 15th to March 21st, but paid on April 10th? You know, you have to look at what that, the date that the remuneration was actually paid for, not paid on. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of looking at those calculations and we've been going back and forth through them. And so you really have to, you really have to look at all of that individual uh, information. You also have to keep track of all of that information per employee because they, the government has alluded to the fact that they're, they're, they may tag that information when you come to file the T4s at the end of the year. So you really do have to do those calculations for each person that you are continuing to pay and are continuing to qualify for the wage subsidy. Yeah. And there's just, uh, I still see the question, Carrie. I, I, there's one other thing is, is you said this and it was clear, I just wanna reinforce it because it's been a question that we, we've both gotten a lot is, this qualifying for one of the periods is that for this wage subsidy, if you qualify once, you don't have to do a test again. You've qualified for the remaining periods. And I just wanted to make sure no one like missed only that. You qualify for the second subsequent period. Yeah. So if you qualify for March, yeah. you qualify but then your next. revenue is up for April, you still qualify for April, but then you have to meet that test for the third period. Yeah, and, and assumingly there could be more coming. Yeah, There's talk about know. the end of June. So anyway, just so everybody is clear yeah. on that. And the wage, wage subsidy and CERB, CERB, of course, have different uh, rules, but um, I just wanted to make sure everyone caught that. Now, Carrie, you had a question that you were gonna ask. Yeah, I'll just ask on behalf of Christine, who asks, how do we know who is eligible for the EPP and EI reimbursement? I think that probably meant CPP. Um, so how no, do we I think know they mean the employment insurance refund? Oh yeah, you, you understood. Yes, you're correct. Yeah. CPP, right? Yeah. 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 So how do you know who is eligible for the e CPP and the EI reimbursement? So do you mean with the wage subsidy? So those are because the employers get to, so this here, who are eligible that for the, it, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they have to have been, so those are the employees that are on leave, but so the, the, they're basically furloughed. So in other words, that you're paying them, but they're not actually working. Okay. Those are the people that qualify for the CPP and the EI. Great, thank you. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that would normally have qualified if they, yeah. Yeah, so you, the, you get to get that back. Yeah, uh, she's, she's that nodding, back. yeah. Yes, thanks. We're getting the thumbs up, yeah. so she's got us. I yeah. took her off mute. <laughs> the good thing with visual, you can go, yeah. yeah. I gave her a voice. Perfect. You have a voice. <laughs> Thank it you. Worked. Yeah. Okay. And, and with that, we're going to switch then to the, this 10%. So they talk about this 10% wage subsidy. Uh, so that's the next slide there, Jackie. Yeah. So this 10% wage subsidy, so this is you get to reduce your payroll remittances uh, by this 10%. So it's 10% of the wages that was paid for the period of March 18th to June 6th. I, actually, this one I think goes a little longer. This is till June 19th. Um, so all so whatever you pay to your employees, you get to reduce your your uh, payroll remittances by 10% of the amount that was paid during that period. This little this little subsidy has changed several times. This is the first one that came out, uh, and then the government realized that this wasn't enough because this was, it was capped at uh, $1,375 per person. Oh, and just a, a, another thing, just with the 75% wage subsidy, there's no cap to that. So if you've paid out 
and you get you can get a hundred thousand you know fifty thousand there's no cap to that amount you can you can go ahead and, and get that this one was initially capped at twenty five thousand but they've changed this one several times throughout so this is basically just uh, you can reduce your your payroll remittances by the 10% of your gross wages. Whatever you do for, to reduce it by that amount, you actually have to reduce your 75% wage subsidy as well. So, so, so you're telling us that we can have both in play? We can have both, but what happens with the 75% is you reduce the 75% by the amount that you've claimed on the 10. So you're better off just to do 75. Well, you know what? It's funny that you should mention that. This morning we worked through the calculation and if you go back to the calculation of the 75, it actually says that you have to take that 10% calculation into consideration whether you've taken it or not. So to me, it's like, that's so silly, but they're saying, yes, do the 10% because we're going to adjust your 75% by it, whether you do or not. So this 10%, they've also said that that can be, you can actually claim that much later. You can even claim it when you go to file your T4s. So they're looking at this, so you know, how much did you pay during that three month period? How much did you pay out in wages? We're gonna allow you to take a 10% subsidy for that. So that all of the, um, the, the documentation and, and all of the information on this hasn't been really put out yet, uh, they're still working on what that's going to look like. But this is, they're saying this one can even be claimed when you go to do your T4s. Whereas the other 75%, that has to be claimed before the begin, before October 1st. So you have till the end of September to claim the 75% subsidies. And the so claim period- This might be one of those not clear parts. That's what I mean. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's really, you go to each line and it doesn't always make sense. Let's just say that. Well, I think, you know, in, in before we move on to the next thing is that it, this program was rolled out really quickly. And, yes. uh, and so it, it's not gonna be perfect. But I think what, what I hear then is that you should apply for the 10% and then, the t then or take it into account if you don't apply and then do the 75%. That's, how, that's the order that they're done. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Because if you're doing the 10%, I mean, we're just coming up to the May yeah. remittances. You should have already taken a, a portion of that for when you sent in your March remittance on April 15th. And then now you would be taking the 10% because now the full uh, April payroll should apply for the 10%. So, yeah, so we have a comment that Dana, yeah. her comment is, I did the 10% for current payroll and the 65% when it became available and it worked out great. Ah, so she split it. 10 75. Months. She said 65. Yeah, yeah. I know, but it's yes. the 75 percent. Okay. But 10 nope. and 10 and six. But they're they're calculated on different numbers. Dana, I took you off on mute, and if you wanted to comment on that. Sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So I obviously as I'm just working really closely with my accounting team um, through all this, and that's what they suggested because I was. Um, I uh, have different, we're kind of working with all of these things within my business, but the, because of this was such a delayed um, response, I guess, with all the other subsidies, they suggested I do the 10% for the, the payroll, um, your um, monthly remittance kind of thing, and a 10% came off that as a help as we went along until the first wave of the payroll subsidy came out, or the wage subsidy, sorry, came out. Uh, which we just were able to kind of get through last week. So, and it, I, I know the numbers, um, it hasn't been delivered yet, but I know the numbers and it worked out great in my favor. You, like I said, they, they kind of explained if you take 10% now, it's just going to be taken off that 75 when you do do it. But like you guys are saying, maybe they're already, they're doing the 75. Well, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying, Dana, is that the 10% gave you immediate relief on your current cash flow demands. Yeah, which or when the 65% we, or whatever, I mean, or, or that, the 75% calculation that has to have the 10% taken off. They're different calculations. Mm -hmm. so, so that becomes the hard part in this conversation. But what you're saying is you took the 10% because now you have a little bit less pressure right now today. And then you did apply for the 75%. Uh, exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so 
and, and Rhonda, that yeah. makes sense completely. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It was kind of nice for that early help just to kind of get through because I'm like myself, I was kind of waiting. We haven't seen anything come through that we kind of fit those guidelines, right? Oh, so for absolutely. Anybody who's listening, it, it worked out well. Yeah, and I'm not sure that's that's ever understood except by those of us who are small business when we say no i mean immediate cash flow we mean yeah. immediate cash flow you know like <laughs> yeah. you know in, in the world of bigger business immediate cash flow can mean a couple of pay cycles from now but when you're really small it's immediate and so and to take some relief off is good yeah and the government did a really great job i thought they, they jumped up really quickly with the loans um and that went out you know for a lot of people they got it within two days and they're still getting it the the forty thousand loan and so you know really essentially that loan is also you know to help you pay your employees the 25 percent that you are going to be re you're, you're responsible for so you know that that came out very quickly and and you know, I've also said to people, remember, that is for your cash needs. So don't be socking it away. Don't slap it down on your, your credit card. Um, yes, you can pay those sorts of things, but that's supposed to be for covering your rent, paying your employees, paying your all of your, your monthly bills that need to, to happen. So that $40,000 loan, you know, really came through very quickly and, and should have been for a lot of cases and for a lot of small businesses enough to help them get through at least these first few months. Okay, next slide then, Rhonda. Yeah. So this here, um, this, this is the rent subsidy where the government has come back and said, well, we're going to partner now with landlords and we are going to give the landlords uh, a subsidy for reducing rent for small businesses. So I haven't seen a lot of landlords that have been willing to accept this program. Um, this it's program, the, I haven't heard a lot about this program or really anybody, you know, the landlords are kind of coming back and going, nah, nah, I'll take 100%, thank you. Like, And so, you know, I'm not sure how you guys have experienced in this or Jackie, if you've talked uh, to anybody. Well, I've had, uh, it, it's been, to be honest, really frank, it's been a bit of a dog's breakfast yeah. because not every landlord is qualified and, and then not every landlord has been willing to look at it. Yeah, and uh, I've heard that from multiple clients, and no, and I have no client that has been that has benefited from the rent being decreased. So yeah. unless I'd love to hear a story, if if you do have a story that you benefit, I'd love for you to um, <clears throat> throw your hand up so Carrie could unmute you. But um, um, but sadly, uh, I I really wish somebody would unmute themselves. Uh, or asked to be because I, sadly, Rhonda, I agree. It's been, yeah. I, I think the program was actually, it sounds sound, it sounds appro like an appropriate reaction to share the burden um, from landlord and tenant and, and levels of government, but it, it hasn't, in my knowledge, had any uptake. Yeah. Will it have, and Christine, you're, you're saying no, no, so you're not any happier about it than, than we are. So, um, Maybe one day we'll be able to share a good story through Carrie for you, but right now we we sadly don't have one. We're going to have like a good news session yeah. when this yeah. is, you know, past us. We're just going to share good things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll keep a list because I got lots of great things. <laughs> Go ahead, but, Christine. Um, I think Christine the has The rent comment. assistance is not one of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm, Christine? I'm, hearing, I'm hearing from other business women and from what I'm hearing is that the landlords just don't want to have to do the work. They don't yeah. want to have to do the paperwork. You know, I think if the, if the tenant is willing to do the paperwork on behalf of the landlord, then I think that's possible. But I'm hearing from multiple people and myself as well is that the landlord just doesn't want to get their hands dirty in this quagmire of paperwork to have the money come through when, right? I think that's why they're, I, I'm hearing that. That's why they're distancing themselves from any involvement. That's, they're happy. Uh, I think they're happy to be involved in it as long as they don't have to do any work and they're guaranteed the, the rent. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't think you're having really that many takers, many landlords that are jumping yeah. on board. Yeah. 
Plus what I heard yesterday, I did hear, and I'm not sure I haven't even verified it for myself, but I did hear it from a landlord was that if a landlord does not have a mortgage on a property, then they don't qualify. Yeah, that's what I've heard as well. And that's and why it's not all the landlords qualify, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's messy and um, you know, I think it's a great idea and, but it's, it's messy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Rhonda, we do have a question, a couple questions actually. Could I yeah. just go back? Sorry, I missed uh, this one here. Kelly is asking if you know if any resources are coming up for people who are just about to launch their business. So I would again work through this wage subsidy because there, there is some, um, you might be able to qualify there. So they're, they're not excluding people from, from new businesses. So the big thing that has to have happened is, did you, did you have a payroll account? No, on they're March not 18th? even, they're just ready to launch. Rhonda. Yeah. So, you know, it's, again, I still would work through this because there are, there, if you work through that, there still has been some employees that have qualified that maybe that, that didn't, weren't, uh, operating before. So there is some concessions for businesses that are just getting going. Uh, I think you would have to work through it and the wage subsidy would be the biggest one. Um, would you be having staff right from the beginning? I don't think in these cases, I'm just reading them. They sound okay. like they're probably going into private practice. Okay. And um, Christine and Kelly, if that's accurate, I do know that there's some, some young entrepreneurs stuff that's come out. Um, so you know, I think there's a couple questions here. Is is could there be a session to for about people that are, are haven't launched and want to launch? Certainly, I know that that I could give some guidance, and and so Carrie, if you think that's a valuable session, I'll I'll toss that back to you, and I, I bet you Rhonda and I, yeah, could help. Um, I think the thing to look at in the meantime is if you qualify for the young entrepreneurs uh, program, which I, I I won't ask you your age. Uh, but but that's the question, and so we can actually there's um, <laughs> a link to it, or I can get <laughs> carry the link so she can send it to the people who want to know, because um, that might help you. Thank you so much. That's very helpful. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the other comments. What else? Well, I think it was a, about startups. Um, during COVID to address growing mental health needs. Um, oh, yeah. And she, this, uh, sorry, Christine, I believe it is. Yeah, Christine is um, a psychotherapist. I wanna look at yeah. psychotherapist yeah. starting a private practice in Brighton, but she's starting virtually to help address the mental health issues and wondering. So we can uh, look into seeing if there yeah. is a, sort of a separate session for startups. I think that's a valid question. Yeah. Thanks, Christine. Yes. Oh, sorry, I'll just address this. Uh, if anyone needs the recording of today, please do email me. I think you'll have my email, but I'll put it again in the chat and I'll be able to get you a recording of today's session. So, okay. so back to Christine here for a second. So, you know, the other thing that you really have to look at is, are you starting up as a proprietor or are you starting up as an incorporated company? Because again, back to the whole proprietor thing, you might, you know, the only thing that's really out there right now it would be the SERP, which is the, the 2000 a month. Um, and if you were looking at, and again, you know, they're kind of, uh, again, if you didn't have any employees or any staff, or any payroll, uh, at least if you were an incorporated company, you could get yourself on payroll and maybe qualify that way versus just being a proprietor and, and being limited to the SERP. So again, I, I would talk to your accountant or your professional because that would be something that you would want to take a look at because maybe the, your actual structure of your business should be adjusted right now from the beginning. Yeah, and, and the other thing I can add is, and my email and phone number, I mean, Carrie can send it out and it is in the deck in the last slide is, is during this time I am uh, giving, um, I have a complimentary hour of support to anyone who needs any information about navigating COVID. So, if you'd like to talk some specifics, please reach out. Um, and I'm and, happy to chat as well. Yeah, so I, I, Rhonda, in, on, the, on the COVID side, and certainly we can both help you with strategy. So yeah. um, that may be um, of assistance too. Um, but bottom line, I only know of grants that for, for new business for young entrepreneurs. I don't know anything today that's to help a business get launched. 
I, I can tell you though, uh, um, is that there's a lot of, like if you're gonna do it virtually, there's a lot of software applications and having done this with another therapist that went online, there's um, uh, software applications that are free that um, do provide you, I'm not gonna remember the acronym, but HEPA, uh, the security level that you need because you're having private therapy sessions. There are free software. So really, if you've got a computer, a camera, and a good microphone, and you can have a private space in your home, you can start virtually with you know, um, very little cost. So anyway, um, we'll move on to the next slide. Since rent got us nowhere happy and off, maybe a little off up. So our next slide, Rhonda, is access to credit. You touched on this a bit, but. So the, what I touched on was the, the CEBA loan, the Canada Emergency Business Account. So that's a $40,000 interest-free loan for small businesses that is going to only require to a repayment of 30,000 by December of 2022. So you have two and a half years to accumulate the funds to repay that loan. And the government will forgive $10,000 of that loan. So you only have to pay back 30,000. That 10,000 will have to be included into your income and you will have to pay tax on that. But inside your corporation, that's a, that's a small amount. Uh, you, you're only paying tax at uh, you know about 12%. So um, it's still worth it right now uh, to have those that loan and to have that money. Uh, and so that's the, the SIBA loan, which moves very quickly. You can apply online through your online banking uh, or give your bank a call. And the only requirement that with that is that you have to have at least $20,000 of payroll in 2019. So that's the SIBA loan. And then there is other loans through the BBC um, and other financial institutions. So if you don't qualify for any of these because you didn't have payroll, then maybe you need to talk to your bank uh, and talk to the, um, the uh, business development bank. They, they're the ones that are uh, really taking care of a lot of the, these, this information or these loans for small businesses. So that Oops. would be, <laughs> Jackie went crazy there for a second. <laughs> Sorry. But, but the, the, the Canada Emergency Business Account, I, I strongly recommend that you, you do that if you're, if, you're look, if you're a small business, if you qualify, uh, because I don't know if this is going to be, again, offered to, or, or for how long. So I, I would really suggest that you get in there and get that, uh, get that loan into your bank. I guess the bottom line with that, Rhonda, is just to have a little conversation around it, is that even if you don't know for sure if you're going to need all of it, you can pay it back right away as soon as you know you don't need it. Yeah, they, they actually, there's nothing that's been put out yet on how we actually pay that back. Um, and the banks are all doing it a little bit differently. Some are putting in a, that 40000 directly into your account. Others are setting up an operating line. So it really depends on your bank what they're doing. Uh, but, uh, but that amount is, so it says up to, but I haven't seen anybody that has got anything other than 40,000. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Cause that it, it does read the, the offering does read up to it. Just said, it sounds like they're. Yeah. Yeah. They, I haven't seen anyone with less than yeah. that. Yeah. Did, did I miss a slide? No, that's it. I think I've got a slide in the wrong. Oh, I know. This is, um, we were talking about income tax. So, oh, so the one, in, should thanks. I go to the income tax remittance slide then? Oh, this is talking about so when just, Yeah, that's just talking about the dates of filing the return. So any HST returns during this period, have you have up until June 30th to A, file them. So they're saying that they, they want you to continue to file on time, but then there's no penalties for filing late. So um, all of the HST returns for the last, uh, from the period March till now, uh, you actually do have till June 30th to file those returns and to pay those HST amounts. Um, personal tax, the, for the regular people who are normally uh, have to file by April 30th or not have to file by June 1st. 
And I'm get that um, slide up. there's no change for proprietors. That's still June 15th. However, I did read something yesterday that they're still looking at trying to extend some of the filing periods for the Dece November and December year ends. And for the proprietors, they're trying to move those filing periods to a later date so but that has not nothing i haven't heard anything about that yet yeah. so that's sorry just, i had to sorry about that folks i just jumped to the slide so rhonda had it as reference and you could see all the dates and then the personal and corporate returns though the amount due on, for the personal returns are the payment has to be uh, on september on or before september 1st without any interest being charged so interest will begin to be accumulated after September 1st. So Rhonda, if I know I'm getting a refund, what should I do? You should get your tax return filed as soon as you can. <laughs> Put that into your hot little hands. That's <laughs> <laughs> so what I thought you'd tell me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we, we just have to remember that some of us should just, it should be as business as usual, right? If you've yeah. been making installments or you're, you're on your own payroll and you know that there's been enough change that or you know enough about 2019 that you're getting a refund, get the refund. Yeah, and and for the people that have gotten a $40,000 loan, I've tried to, to stay, stay on track, file when we all normally file, pay when we normally pay, if you wanna defer that a little bit, but you know, don't defer it and then all of a sudden you got like 80 or 100,000 that's due on September 1st and now you're, you're jammed. So, you know, if you can stay on your regular schedule, stay on your regular schedule if you've got the cash flow to, su to support that, because then it's just going to keep everything as normal for you as, the, as you have in the past. I'm hoping, hoping I've got the right screen share on. Thanks for the, I'm trying to get one, I'm, I'm not getting the right here. Um, current slide. So there's, just until a little Jackie is doing that, let me just kind of flip. Sorry about this, folks. Things. Oh, it's okay. So you got the access to the credit, you got the rent, and then you, the, there was talk mm. about students for students. Um, yeah, where, what slide it? would you like to, pardon me? I'm, I'm, I'm good with the, so there's- How about the, the province? Problems? I'm just looking here. Sorry, folks, we're gonna make sure we get, there's some Ontario stuff. Yeah, I think it's important to look at that Ontario stuff, Jackie, because I don't think that a lot of people know, for an example, that the $200 for parents, uh, for every child under 12, and $250 for special needs. So that's just $200 to help parents if there was any sort of uh, resources that they needed, if they needed to buy a computer or, or a laptop or get some additional paper or whatever it was to just help uh, with having to educate their own kids right now or, or to follow those programs. So there's a one-time $200 for every child that's 12 and under. I think they're 12, it says every child under 12, but I think if you're 12, you qualify as well. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. That, yeah. So I don't know if, any, if anybody hasn't done those, I would suggest get those uh, applications in. They're, they're right there and then that will, um, the Ontario government will send out a check for $200 per child. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of something for being becoming teachers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what else is in there? Oh, WSIB uh, as well. Yeah, your WSIB. So that filing didn't have to happen until the end of August. So all of your WSIB filings, you don't have to file those returns yet. Both the returns and the payments are not due until the end of August. So if you haven't filed those, you're still okay on those as well. Um, what else in there? Is there anyone with any other questions uh, on any of these? And, and the seniors, that just came out today as well, an extra $500 for seniors on OAS. Yeah. Or C, two, there's two amounts there, Ron. Yeah. So yeah. there was one for CPP and one for OAS. Yeah. Yeah, so there's there's those as well. And then there's the CERB, which is the, the catch-all for everything else. So if you don't qualify for any of all, 
of any of these other programs, then that might be the answer for you. So, you know, we've really had to look at every single person on an individual basis and, and look at what are their needs, what's going to be the best for them, and, and then move forward with with the programs that are gonna work for them. So it, there definitely has been a lot of work going forward for, for accountants, for sure, been looking at every single client individually. Um, and then for those who are maybe a, a landlord, um, the tax bills, uh, interim tax bill, the city's put some relief in place. And some, there's also, they're also open to relief on the hydro side. Um, you just reach out to the city and um, the other thing is that I think Rhonda you touched on it when you get some of these programs is that in, in times like of uncertainty like this when we don't know what are we can't predict revenue streams or the next thing that could come at us I think that uh, that idea of cash being king um, you know the clients that have engaged me to help them manage that side of their business when it comes to cash flow, um, my recommendation is let's just hang on to that. Like mm -hmm. it's okay, it, it's good to sit with just a little bit more as a cushion because things are unpredictable. Be that in your personal, uh, you know, what you've drawn out of the business and you've got something personally uh, to be, um, just sort of sit on that and certainly within your business. And that's why Rhonda says, even if you don't need the loan, Maybe you want to think about it because yeah. we don't know what we don't know as we move forward. So, so that is the end of the, the, the slides. There's more. We didn't go through every slide on the COVID deck. Uh, we didn't touch on the student stuff um, because we um, didn't feel like there were students in it. But if you're, if you're hiring a student, know that there's many programs in place mm -hmm. for hiring students. If you typically hired students in the summer, I think you should consider that both for the, the future good of our country because we need to get these students, um, uh, you know, completing uh, their education and paying for their education, completing it, and then also work experience. So there's many programs uh, for nonprofits as well for, to hire staff. And um, the other thing is, you know, I think every day we have to sit back and look at things just a little bit more um, purposeful. And I encourage you to maybe over dinner, you, you can share the table with, a sig you're sharing the table with somebody significant. If hopefully you're not always social distancing alone, alone. And if you are, then grab your, your um, phone and get on, yes, one more Zoom call uh, and share dinner with somebody. But maybe you could th think about your days in, in two ways and to talk about the rose, which is something that's really, you know, it's in full bloom and it's really something that's working well in your business and the bud is something that you can see that's coming and it's gonna it's gonna be beautiful it's it's on its way and then to also look at the thorns and say what can I do to navigate these thorns but in every day we're given there's been tough parts but there's been great parts I think that this gift I, I know um, you know and I gotten the conversation with this on the weekend with the people that I'm physically distancing with is that um, uh, we got into a conversation about defining moments in life and um, this will be one of those and as we sit here and we navigate all of this confusing and overwhelming stuff I think one thing we've learned is that's why we have professionals to support us in our life because we want them to make sense out of it but that we all of us get to um, decide how this moment will define us and how it will define our business and so i encourage you to look at the gifts that we have every day with roofs over our head and meals on our table and um, to just look at the opportunities that are presented to you to do what you're doing every day to serve your clients well and um, now you're being given a, a task a creative task on how to serve them in a creative way and uh, embrace it because some great things will come from it so very true. A quick question for you from Cassia, um, I guess Rhonda. Um, are the programs for seniors listed under the news.ontario.ca? The new programs that just came, that were just announced this morning, um, I believe, I don't know if they're, they're in there yet. I actually just saw them 
from a news feed that, that yeah. just literally I'm, popped up just before we were about to start. So I would imagine that you would be able to go to, th those would be federal programs though. So yeah, they, uh, they just, might not be in. Mm -hmm. I'll put the link right in and just, I'm getting there. Just give me two seconds. Yeah, well, I'm sharing it apparently. There I am, Angie, sharing my screen again. Um, but this is the link. And uh, so if you switch out from sharing your PowerPoint slide, you have to share your internet screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just put the link in the chat box, actually. Oh, perfect. So when you there go there, yeah. Sorry about that. I, I too, way too many screens. Angela's been helping me through the call because telling me when I'm not sharing the right thing. You're doing an amazing job, ladies. Amazing. <laughs> because I got too many screens. <laughs> um, anyway, you know, the new life, right? Yeah. So I put that link up and save it because that's where everything is when it's announced. And you, when you go there, if, you would, if I would have scrolled down just before the, below the banner, it would have said for seniors and I click on it and it'll get me to what I need and probably more links on how to apply or what to do or so that's where you can look Cassia I know yes thanks so much you're welcome any final questions I believe uh I know people are hopping into other zoom calls zooming yeah. into other rooms but uh final chance for any other questions this has been a really great session um there's a lot of questions people have um, and I think that probably Rhonda and Jack, you would both say that if you have questions that haven't been answered today, definitely do uh, seek advice of your professional uh, in your local community, because I know we do have people from across the province. Um, any final words from you ladies? No, I'd say the same thing. If you want somebody locally, I've worked in, in many communities in Ontario. So if you don't know, have a connection, let me know. And I can wonder, I may be able to make a connection. And certainly we can have a Zoom call to help you through any of the stuff that we've talked about today. And um, I did no, drop your I emails you into the chat. This. Pardon me? Do you want to show us the final slide you said where your emails will be? Sure. I did drop your emails into uh, the chat, but in case someone missed it, let's just maybe see a, a slide with your emails and, and folks can uh, follow up afterwards. I'll see how I do with that. Now you're getting compliments on your, on your glasses, uh, Jackie, oh. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Thanks, Cass. Yeah, I guess I haven't seen you since I got these glasses. Um, I know they're fun, eh? I got, they're the, they're, um, okay, now I got to get to the right screen. So if I was to make any kind of final comments on this, I would say, you know, don't be afraid to, to uh, transition your business. And, you know, like we had talked about earlier, I think it's ready, fire, aim. Um, you know, get out there, just execute, throw it out there, and then fine tune it after. So um, that's something that I've always lived by, ready, fire, aim, and I feel that it, it works well. Um, doing business is going to change a little bit, and just remember to, you know, be kind be and fun. Your heart, and you know, that will that will shine through. And you know, I talked to a client this morning just about integrity, and it's like, you know, if you if you live with integrity and you work with integrity and you and you have integrity, people will know. You don't have to tell them. Like they will, they will know. And so, you know, it's the best way to be. Just be a good human. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a mar it's a marathon, not a sprint right now. Exactly. And, exactly. And, yeah. The words of wisdom you've given us today are gonna gonna go a long way. I appreciate the slides and the and the detail in them. Uh, just a reminder, anyone who would like a copy of the recording. So you will also get a copy of the slides, of course, when you get the recording. Uh, just um, email me directly at, uh, I'll put my email one more time in the, in the chat, uh, because that's the best way I can turn around and respond to your email. So uh, on behalf of all of us, Jackie and Rhonda, we want to thank you so much for enlightening us, informing us, entertaining us a little bit as well. We really appreciate your spirit as well as, as your wisdom. So thank you so much. We know that you are working overtime right now for the women in this community and others. So thank you so much. And uh, we're sending you virtual hugs today. Thank you so thank much. You. Enjoy your day, everyone. <laughs> Thanks so much for taking part. Bye-bye.